That's a tribute and a wish of good luck in your next endeavor, Jason Garrett. And for the future firing of Matt Nagy, good luck. Welcome back to Odd Man Sports, your weekly dose of funny sports and gambling commentary. Or, as the critics refer to it, a betting show with a comedy problem. I'm your odd host, Brandon Perna. I'm also the host of That's Good Sports, so please take a moment to not like and not subscribe. Reverse psychology, or is it? On this week's show, I'm getting into the mind-blowing business. I will make the case that this man is not Rex Ryan. I'll tell you, following Antonio Brown, which other superstar NFL player is lying to you. And I'll share with you the one Aaron Rodgers play from Sunday, which is unlike anything you've ever seen in the history of the league. <laughs> Dinks and dunks! Thanksgiving is upon us. When we join hands and celebrate the time exactly 400 years ago when the Wampanoag tribe and the pilgrims first broke bread. Followed by generations of battles between the Native Americans and the American pioneers. Until most recently, 1909. Which was the score of last Sunday's Chiefs-Cowboys game. This past week also marks the anniversary of two infamous moments in American history. The assassination of John F. Kennedy and the butt fumble. One caused by a violent shot to the head which brought the entire nation to tears. A moment those who witnessed it will never forget. And the other, when JFK got shot. After Kennedy was killed, the NFL made the ill-advised decision to play the games that November Sunday in 1963. But the craziest NFL-related story involving Kennedy's assassination will always be this. Back in 2015, when the Seahawks' defensive end, Michael Bennett explained after a Lions game why he disliked Matthew Stafford. He's from Dallas, and Dallas, they killed the president. So I just have a little hatred towards him. Uh, okay. And if you wonder if this kind of bizarre thinking runs in the family, it does, because Martellus Bennett, when asked about his brother's JFK comments, said this. I think it's funny. Mike's just a funny guy. When JFK was killed, Stafford probably wasn't even born yet. Considering Stafford was born in 1988, I'd say probably not. Speaking of kooky NFL brothers, Rex Ryan, seen here testing a tandem bike weight limit with his twin brother Rob, recently made some harsh comments about Jets head coach Robert Sala. This guy's supposed to be a defensive guru. I heard everything, and I take it personal on this one. Everything I heard about was, well, this guy's a lot like a lot like myself, but without the, the bad part. Yeah, well, some of the bad part you need, because this team doesn't play with any, any damn heart. This past Sunday, however, Ryan did a 180 on Sala, heaping praise on the Jets head coach. I got to tell you something. I was blown away by the guy. I reached out to him, talked to him, and and I was blown away. I thought he was super smart and just, you know, he's got a direction for this football team. I mean, the more I talked to him, the more impressed I was with Robert Sala. Now, I would say this had to be the biggest switcheroo of all time involving Rex, until I remembered this old Buffalo News profile, which included this detail on the Ryan brothers. While they were in the hospital, there's a good chance their parents, Buddy and Doris, mixed them up on multiple occasions. Which makes a ton of sense, because looking at this photo, I think we know which one is named Rob and which one is actually Sexy Rexy. Now this past Sunday, the Packers ended their streak of nine straight covers against the spread. The Chiefs covered at home for the first time all season and Russell Wilson continued his streak to eight quarters of not throwing a touchdown in a loss to the Arizona Cardinals. After the game, a clearly frustrated Pete Carroll abruptly ended his press conference early, only to return minutes later wearing different clothes. 
in and out of this, this whole season, and we've got to see if we can turn this thing. I, I'm, I'm really done. What was your... I know that you probably have some more questions. I don't know if I have any more answers for you. Now, many took this press conference as a sign that Carol is reaching a breaking point. But the optimist in me saw it as something different. Carol reaching out to female viewers. Wardrobe change! Speaking of female outreach, Condoleezza Rice, the former Secretary of State and a Cleveland Browns fan, was a guest on Monday night's Manning cast. Well, I'm really glad to see women in the front offices. That makes a big difference. And by the way, in the front office of the NFL as well. And then uh, women on the field as officials. Uh, that's a wonderful breakthrough. Can't argue with that. But my favorite part of the interview was Peyton's attempt to talk up the credentials of Rice, who many believe will be the league's next commissioner. She can talk about the Middle East and the middle linebacker. I like that. <laughs> She can sell the Americans on the need to get rid of WMDs and OTAs. I like that. Now, would Rice be a good NFL commissioner? I have no idea, but I do appreciate her career strategy, or strategery, which appears to be appear smart by following really dumb white guys. Now, speaking of the Browns, in their game against the Lions, left guard Jonah Jackson was hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for reportedly saying something about Jadavian Clowney's mom. And while both Jackson and Clowney declined to share what was said, the fans want to know, which leads us to our next segment. Top 10 Yo Mama jokes Jonah Jackson said to Jadavian Clowney. Number 10, hey Jadavian, your mama's so dumb, she thinks Condoleezza Rice is Ray Rice's girlfriend. <clears throat> All right, um, sorry about that. That was a bad joke. Uh, I apologize. Domestic violence is not something to joke about, unless, of course, it's the man getting beat up, and that's on me. It's just a bad decision. Should have gone with something like, your mama's so fat, every time the announcer says, Freddie Kitchens, her stomach growls. Or, your mama is so dumb, Gronk defeated her in a spelling bee. Or, your mama is so white, Bill Belichick tried to convert her to a receiver. So, that's on me, and I will try to do better moving forward. And finally, Frank Reich's Colts defeated the Bills 41-15. In Buffalo, in the same stadium, Reich led the greatest comeback in NFL history, helping overcome a 35-3 deficit to the Houston Oilers in that famous 1993 playoff game. And being back in Buffalo brought out some strong emotions from the former Bills QB. 30 years ago, in a really, after a really big game, right down the hall in a press conference, I shared the lyrics to a song that meant a lot to me, that really spoke to where, where I get my strength. Please be baby got back, please be baby got back. The song's In Christ Alone, and it's written by Sean Craig. Oh, so close. And if you think this song choice suggests Reich isn't a fun guy, well, Sunday's locker room celebration suggests otherwise. All right, fellas, hey, I know we got a long way to go, but oh my goodness! Yeah! 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 Uh, I'll have what he's having, the body of Christ. Actually then, I'll just have the pancakes. Money Talks! Last week, the Tampa Bay Times published an explosive story in which Antonio Brown was accused by his live-in chef of attempting to obtain a fake vaccination card. And if you haven't read the article, buckle up! Because I haven't seen something with this many layers involving a guy with the initials AB since at least three Sundays ago. According to the Times article, Antonio Brown convinced Steven Ruiz to quit his cooking job in LA and move to Tampa to make him, quote, prepare meals that follow the strict TB12 regimen. And if you're wondering why on earth an established chef would leave Los Angeles to move across the country to Tampa Bay 
to prepare quinoa bowls for quite possibly the biggest a-hole on the planet, well, this might explain it. Ruiz's previous job? Working for quite possibly the other biggest a-hole on the planet? At Gordon Ramsay's for seven years. Can you just shut the fuck up for 30 seconds? Included in the article are texts between Ruiz and AB's girlfriend about obtaining a fake J&J &J vaccination card for Antonio Brown, which Ruiz says he released because AB shortchanged him for around $10,000. Also included in this fun text exchange from AB to his chef reads, $750 times 50 days equals $45,000. Bro, you been paid, which, when I put 750 times 50 in my trusty old calculator, aka my phone, I get 37,500. Which leads me to believe that Antonio Brown doesn't believe in science or math. The article goes on to say, that it was Tom Brady's personal trainer, Alex Guerrero, who personally documented AB's fake vaccination card, which apparently satisfied the Buccaneers. Sketchy. So what's the takeaway here? That Antonio Brown is unvaccinated? Sure. That he's a bad guy? We already knew that. But the bigger story is just how easy it is for players to obtain fake vax cards and how little verification the teams and the league require. Essentially, all they need is a photo of the card. And based on that, I think it's safe to say that AB is just the tip of the iceberg and the first of many fish to get caught in this easily disprovable ruse. And while it would be totally irresponsible for me to guess who else might have obtained a fake vax card, if past behavior is any indicator, I'm guessing it'll be someone who is a zealot about what they put in their body. Someone who has demonstrated a continued skepticism about conventional modern medicine. Someone with a track record of being willing to go to great, not to mention devious lengths to ensure their personal preferences are met. Again, I do not have anyone specific in mind but I'm guessing it'll be someone who fits this profile. In a totally unrelated note, have we ever heard Tom Brady explicitly say that he's been vaccinated? Because all I can find is this statement from Bruce Arians, which, thanks to the chef, we know isn't true. We're 100% vaccinated, our entire organization, all the players, all the coaches, everybody. That includes Brady, though he has not publicly said so. So can one of you fucking Homer Tampa Bay reporters do your job and ask Tom fucking Brady if he's been vaccinated yet? Jesus. Odd man out. The best football game of a rather pedestrian weekend of pro ball was the seesaw back and forth between the Vikings and the Packers, which the Vikings won 34 to 31 on a last second field goal. But what should be remembered about this game has nothing to do with the actual game, but rather the strategy behind a single play, which I believe has never been executed in 101 years of NFL football. This play occurred with the Vikings up seven, with over two minutes to go in the game. Ball at the Packers own 25. Blitz coming, Rodgers floats one, Valdez, Scantling inside, trying to get to the end zone, he's going to go, a bomb to Valdez, Scantling, touchdown Green Bay. 75 yards and 9 seconds for the tying score, what a great play, not by Aaron Rodgers or Marquez Valdez Scantling, but by Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer. And I don't know why this isn't obvious to everyone else, but Minnesota was purposely letting Green Bay score here. How do I know this? Well, take a listen to post-game comments made by Zimmer about Rodgers. We hadn't stopped him the whole second half, and I didn't want him to have the ball. So I figured the best place to win the game was him on the bench. So how did the Vikings dial up an intentionally blown coverage for the tying Valdez-Scantling touchdown? much in the same way Jets defensive coordinator Greg Williams did last season when he purposely left the team's slowest undrafted corner 
on an island with Henry Ruggs for the game's final play, which ended in predictable fashion. Similarly, check out this next-gen stats breakdown of how Minnesota defended MBS by putting number 23 here, safety, Xavier Rhodes, on an island with a guy with lightning 4.37 speed. But the giveaway in Zimmer's plan is the actions of number 22, Harrison Smith, who ignores any deep coverage responsibilities to instead double Devontae Adams on a shallow cross. Oh, did I mention they're also blitzing? This coverage makes no sense, unless you thought your odds of winning were better in a tie game with the ball in Kirk Cousins' hands than up seven with the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, that Rodgers was only driving for the tying score. But you're wrong, because after the rodgers Lafleur two-point kerfuffle last season, there was less than zero chance Lafleur wasn't going to let Rodgers go for the win. Now, we've seen NFL defenses purposely let opponents score in order to get the ball back. Most notably, Super Bowl 32 when the Packers let Terrell Davis waltz in from one yard out for the go-ahead score with under two minutes remaining. But this was different. This was a coach with so much respect for a player that he totally ignored the percentages in order to take him off the chessboard. And it worked perfectly. And since the NFL is a copycat league, get ready for a lot more of these late game freebie touchdowns for Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, and Tom Brady, the game's three most lethal late game serial killers. You thought these guys made it look easy before? Just wait until the defense stops trying to slow them down. All right, that's it for today. Comment below if you believe my Rogers theory or if you think I'm an idiot and that the Viking secondary is just bad. Which I guess technically both could be true. All right, have a good Thanksgiving and we'll chat next week. Oh, man, sports. It's in the game.